Hi everybody, Mrs. Lighten here again with your Quick Thursday ELA lesson. We have been talking all week about the story Goldilocks Goes to Camp. Um, it incorporates a lot of different fairy tales in a very fun way. Um, the author really does a great job kind of subtly adding in the different variations of all of those fairy tales so that you guys can um, have fun determining which ones are being referenced. Um, you had a chance to enjoy a read aloud with Miss Radley on Monday, along with your Zoom ELA lesson. And then you guys also did some writing with um, finding claims and then backing it up with text evidence. We are going to kind of do the same thing today with your graphic organizer that you will be completing. It is the second to last page in your remote learning packet. Um, it is 2.3 entitled, What's So Funny? There's also a writing activity that follows this that we are not going to worry about. Um, so today we are going to be talking a little bit about sensory language and what that means. And then we are also going to be pulling fu some funny moments from the story, why we think they are funny, and then also what tools or what we think the author is using or doing um, when using these certain funny little tidbits in their story. So again, we'll be making a claim and then backing it up with the text evidence. So the story Goldilocks goes to camp. I found that while reading, um, the author goes into really great detail to kind of set the scene for you guys. Most, most prominently, I found that in the forest scene. Um, some of the describing words that I kind of pulled and wrote down just to refer back to for you guys was the way that she described what was going on around the campers. Um, the animal noises and how the kids shivered and the wind was moaning, but they cramped on through the creepy shadows and the shadowy pine leaves. So all of those words are kind of setting the scene for what is happening. So in my mind, I'm picturing campers that are shivering and I'm hearing the creepy moans of the animals and seeing the trees swing. So that is a way that the author kind of pulls you in and allows the reader to again use their imagination while they are reading. It um, really does help to make you more engaged while you are reading and then that way you take more from your reading. You're learning something, you're really comprehending what it is you're reading because you're interested. Um, just like the poetic devices that we talked about in our last unit, it's a way that the author, like I said, pulls you in. So to go along with that, we have a quick review about sensory language. Sensory language is a way for the writer to help the reader see or connect with an image, description, action, or scene. So what the reader, or I'm sorry, the writer does is she kind of builds on each one of your five senses while writing so that you are able to connect with what is going on in the story. You're able to use your imagination to kind of create a picture in your mind of what is happening. And the author does so by using your five senses, hence the word sensory language. So I just put a couple examples up here and I will take a picture and post this as well so you guys can refer back if you need it um, in the future. So we have smell, sight, taste, touch, and hear. So to go along with each one of these senses, the author will use words to describe odors if, some, if they want to describe a smell. And I just put some examples. Sight, obviously this is gonna be words to describe appearances. So any type of adjective that describes the way something looks. So you could um, describe the color, the shape. You could say it's bright or pretty. So tastes are um, words to describe food or things that you eat. So you might say bitter or sweet or gross or delicious. Just any of those describing words that really um, drive away the point that the author is trying to make. So touch, words to describe textures, rough, smooth, prickly, any word that describes a texture. And hearing are obviously words that describe sounds, loud, booming, or soothing. So in the Goldilocks story, um, the animal noises were described. Even the sound of the wind was described as moaning. So that would be something that would really stimulate your sense of hearing. So moving on to our graphic organizer, we have what's so funny. First column says 
find a moment that is funny, write it down, and write the page number. For this, you can use an exact quote from the story, or you can just kind of describe the scene that is happening that you found funny. In the second column, it is funny because. Why did you find this particular moment in the story funny? And then the last column is what the author is doing as a writer to make the moment funny. So the author has put this moment in the story for a reason. Why do you think the author added this particular story, this um, little bit of humor? Why is it important to the rest of the story? And you can include um, the sensory language factor in here if you wanted to use some more describing words. Um, that would be put in this column because that would be the device or tool that the author was using. So I did the first moment for you guys. You can definitely write this down or you can come up with three on your own, but really just um, fill in the other two. So moment one I found on page one and I thought that it was funny when Loxie's mom tells her that bears will be visiting for the summer next door. So Loxie was giving her mom a hard time about going to fear camp. So her mom thought, hmm, let me tell her that the neighbors are having bears visit next door because she knew that Loxie was afraid of bears so that that would get her to willingly go to fear camp. So it is funny because she is tricking Loxie into going in to fear camp and it worked. So that's where I said for the third column, the author was setting the stage for the rest of the story because the story, there really would be no story if Loxie didn't go to camp. The whole story is about her adventures at camp. So right off the bat, the author was using humor to set the stage for the rest of the story. So moment two and three will be you guys filling it out. This template will be on Seesaw and Dojo for you. If you have it only in your remote learning packet, you can fill it out. Take a picture, text an email to your teacher. I will post the materials um, along with the rest of the stuff on Seesaw and Dojo. Again, if you guys have any questions, please reach out. Like I said earlier, it is a beautiful day in Syracuse today. If you can give your brain a break and get outside, I think that would be helpful to everybody. We miss you all, and we will um, be in touch. Have a great weekend. I will see you guys on Tuesday in our community Zoom meeting. Have a great weekend.